Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take pre-love secondhand thrifted finds and share the process with you all of how I give these items new life. So in today's video, it's just that. I'm taking some items that I found at thrift stores and I'm sharing the process with you all of what I did to the items to give them a new look. Here's a pretty common item that you might see, a bowl, a wooden bowl. Though from the top, it doesn't look so bad, but the bottom, that has seen better days. So let's get this thing sanded. Yes, this is just some stain and some top coat that for whatever reason is coming off. It's just not very pretty though. I'm not gonna try to get it all the way off to like refinish it and make it another wood bowl. Let's make it unique and paint it. But first, yes, I have to get it kind of smooth because that top coat, that stain is leaving it rough and bumpy. So 220 sandpaper is seeming to work just fine to sand it off on my orbital sander. I've got the bottom all sanded. I do need to at least scuff sand the inside. It's not coming off anywhere in the inside of the bowl for some whatever reason but I do need to get it scuff sanded so I'll do whatever I can with the orbital sander then I'll switch over to just hand sanding it making sure that I get a good gripping so when I go to paint it my paint has something to grip onto. No the inside of a bowl is not the funnest thing to sand but it does need to be done if I want my paint job to last so now I'm just cleaning this off with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. After my bowl is dry, I'm gonna go in with a couple coats of shellac. This is gonna even out that prosody. If there's some top coat left, if there's some stain left, just fill in that raw wood. I think it would be fun to paint this. I'm gonna paint this with Sweet Pickens Ocean Blue color. Oh, this is just a yummy color. I'm gonna give this bowl kind of a primitive folk art look. So Sweet Pickens Milk Paint is a dry powder. So you mix up equal parts powder to equal parts water. You stir it for two minutes and then you sit it off to the side and let it thicken up for about two to 10 minutes. After two coats of paint on both sides, I'm gonna go in with some fine grit steel wool, the 4-0 steel wool, and just make sure that everything's nice and smooth. I'm not gonna distress this. I don't want it to go back down to that wood. I just wanna make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Now we just have a painted bowl, but let's take it to the next level by adding some Fusions Aging Wax. Oh, this is going to seal that milk paint in. It's going to take it to the next level. Look at that, how it just really gives it that primitive, old-timey folk art vibe. Milk paint needs to be sealed in anyway, so why not have some fun, fun with some colored wax? And this aging wax just happens to be my go-to favorite. I just love how it really does what it says. It's an aging wax. It really gives age to this bowl. So you wax it on and then you wipe off that excess. Now I think that bowl is pretty easy, but this one, this one might be a little bit more difficult, maybe. So I love cheese boxes. I love when they have the lids. 
somebody had taken the time to paint this it makes it a little bit outdated so i'm going to go ahead and sand it off because yes that paint is raised and if you paint over it you're going to see all those beautiful flowers so just some 220 sandpaper i'm not trying to get down to the wood i'm just making it nice and smooth i don't need to get all the paint off i just need to make it smooth and flat that you're not going to see that image under the paint that we're going to paint it but I think I've got it all smoothed out. I'm just going to go ahead and clean it with some Dawn dish soap, some hot water. I'm trying not to get it too awful wet, just get that sanding dust taken care of. And just like I did the previous bowl, I'm going to seal this all in, even out that prosty where the paint is, where the raw wood is, where I've sanded and I haven't sanded. Shellac is going to act like a primer, help the paint that I'm going to put on there stick to it. It is just, I really like to use shellac a lot in my, on my projects. For this small cheese box, this color, I'm going with curry, which is a yellowy mustard curry color. Oh, this is, it's a scary color, but it can be a fun color. So same again, same thing again, equal parts dry powdered, equal parts water. Stir it for two minutes, sit it off to the side, let it thicken up. Because of the prep that I did with sanding and doing a couple coats of shellac, I know you for the first coat you can see those flowers, but the second coat is going to grab onto that first coat and completely cover it up. A little bit of prep is definitely worth the time so you don't have to spend so much on painting. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some of the Mercantile, the new Spring 2024 spring release stamps on this that painted beautifully it covered up beautifully now where it is joined together that is a detail in itself so i'm not going to try to put any wording by that i'm actually going to completely turn it around and directly on the back of it i'm going to do a little bit of stamping and i think i'm just going to do the dry goods co and like the number seven I find the easiest way for me to stamp on a round object like this is to use packing tape. So I just grab packing tape, I put it on the stamps. Now I'm trying to keep these two together so I'm going to layer up my packing tape. I'm going to use three pieces so everything is completely covered. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little handles. I'm going to fold over the sides and make little handles. There's still going to be some sticky. I still want to have some sticky to use to stick it to the object once I get it all inked up. For my ink, I'm using the IOD's black ink. It is a permanent ink. So I just fill in up my stamp with some ink. It's nice to have it on that packing tape. I can see through the packing tape. That's why I choose packing tape and not like masking or painter's tape. I still want to see my stamps underneath there. So once I get it all inked up, then I'll just transfer it on to the board. Make, I always have, like, I'm always nervous if that any of that is going to get on there, so I try to clean it up. Now I am just going to eyeball where I want it. There's a little bit of sticky on there, so I can just attach that that way. And then I like to use my Cricut scraping tool. 
and then just kind of rub it on. My tape's on there. It's good and stuck. I don't have to worry about it shifting. I just want to make sure that my image is com getting completely transferred. That image turned out so well. That packing tape is really a great hack. So now I'm just using some more of that Aging Wax by Fusion and I'm going right on top of that curry paint. Oh, this is going to be gorgeous. But now instead of just wiping this off, I'm rubbing some Homestead Clear Wax. I don't really want this to turn brown. I want it to stay that wonderful curry color just with a little bit of age to it. So the natural wax will act like a eraser and just blend everything in and the darker wax will stick into those detailed areas. Homestead Wax is made by the Fusion Company, so it's still available at the Painted Heirloom. <gasps> what a difference that waxing makes. thought I had my camera on, but I needed to get rid of that stamp on the bottom. So I sanded that off and I put a little aging wax on that bottom to make this look like it was an older piece. just keep seeming to go up on difficulty so this one this one I think is a silverware flatware box I'm thinking I'm not sure what it is but I just love the little drawer that it had so I don't know hey you know every goodwill prices things differently but I just thought it was so super cute with that drawer that we could make it over and, and make it into a little cubby and actually I think the velvet is in good shape it's dirty but it's in good shape it just needs to be cleaned and I I know it had some kind of a like a hinging system on it so that it didn't the chain is broken so that it would stay open I am not going to replace that I don't have anything that small on hand I'd have to try to order something but I am going to remove those little screws to clean up this velvet I'm just going to take masking tape and kind of act like a lint brush and get all that nice and clean and it seems to be working and I will just match up my design to this green I will just go something that coordinates with it there's no reason I know that velvet if it's in terrible shape is not the funnest to take off so I was happy when I opened this box up and it was in good shape so just a lot of masking tape just to get it all nice and clean and you can see that I kind of made some strings, so we'll just give it a little haircut and cut any of that excess string off that has just frayed. Now I do want to paint the box, so I'm going to protect the inside. I don't want to make a gap or anything by trying to paint the, like this little edge there. The, the top is still going to be that wood, the bottom is still going to be the wood. So we'll just take the time to use some masking tape and tape that off. Now I didn't, I thought the knob on top was a little weird. I think you could just open it with using both hands. So I wanted to remove both of the knobs, but man, I thought they would just unscrew. They were just screwing, they weren't bolted in or anything, but I could not get those little babies to move. They would just spin round and round and round. So I finally kind of pulled them with a hammer because I was like, okay, I'm done with this, but I don't want you, you are not in my design. So you must, you must leave. And actually what it ended up doing is just breaking the screw off. It just would not come off. You know how we are. We are, de <laughs> we are determined. And I didn't crack it. That was already cracked from the original. So I'm just filling, the, filling it in. I hammered down the screw that broke it off. And then I'm just hiding it underneath some putty. So now I'm just going to go ahead and scuff sand this, just get off some of that top coat, whatever top coat's left on it. There's hardly any on the top. The sides seem to be a little bit more shinier than the top, but just get my surface nice and prepped.
Now, I'm not sure if I broke this when I was sanding or it was just hanging on by threads when I sanded it. All of a sudden, I'm missing a chip. So I'm just going to go to some Bondo wood filler and we're just going to make that little chip. So the Bond Bondo is nice when you're working on a project like this because like 10 minutes it is dry and you can sand it. And I should definitely be able to shape it. So I'm just going to just taped off the area so the one side is flat. And then now I'm just mixing up the Bondo, which is the wood putty with a little bit of the hardener. And you need to start working with it as soon as you get this mixed up because it cures quickly. Enough time that you can use it, but you need to work quickly. is a new color that I'm trying out for the first time. I just was excited about the name and the old vintage thought of the olive color. Another one of IOD spring release was this lattice rose paint inlay. Now these are a little bit on the different side. If you've never used a paint inlay, I'm going to show you on a really small drawer. Yes, I'm just doing the drawer though. I needed something to help hold up my drawer. So is this not beautiful? I'm not going to cut the piece off. I'm just going to use the piece as is. So you have a grid side and you have a painted side and you want to have the painted side go down and you see the grid side. So to a, to transfer the paint inlay onto my little drawer, I just have the milk paint, but now I'm going to be using decoupage transfer gel. So this is a moist adhesive and it's not really like a moist adhesive, like it's going to keep the paper on. It's just going to transfer for that image. So you need a generous amount, just like I'm doing now, just brushing it on and getting any little specks that decide to be there. I'm evening it out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mist my paper. I'm going to wet my paper with a mister bottle. I know it was kind of hard with these big old things that I was using <laughs> to hold the drawer up. You just have to use what you have. So I'm getting that section wet and then once I have it wet, I will put it on my drawer and then I'll use a roller, like a brayer roller, um, just what I have. I thrifted this, this wood one to make sure that it is evenly laid out. And then you just sit it off to the side and let it dry. And now that it is completely dry, which was about 30 minutes I do have a fan on in my studio to help paint dry so now I'm just re-misting it with a mister bottle that's going to help release that image should be one with the paint now just rubbing it just a little bit to make sure that it is not stuck that that image is on my little drawer and then I will just gently start to release that paper. Now, if you have resistance, that means it's not wet enough. It's not, it's going to pull up. So you want it to be just a nice, easy glide that is just coming off. So if you feel any resistance, just wet it down or rub it, make sure that it is completely wet.
need to set that off to the side and let it dry again, but I can work on the box. So I'm going to do a mixture of clear wax and aging wax. This turned out beautiful. Yes, I could have filled in that gap, but I love the old timey look. I love the character of the perfectly and perfect. So if I would have filled in that gap, you wouldn't have saw it. I love, I love the story there. So, and I love what dark wax does to milk paint because I got a little bit of crackling going on. No chippiness because I, I think because I applied the shellac, it's unpredictable, but I'm just mixing the two together to just get into those little areas, sealing my milk paint and just popping those little crack and crazings that are going on. And yep, the crack is character. That's why I didn't fill it in. After I was done waxing the outside of this little cubby box, I'm removing the tape and where that paint and the tape meet, there will be a hard crusty edge and that'll be a dead giveaway that it is freshly painted. So I just always remove the tape and take some sandpaper and it takes like minute time to take sandpaper over this and make sure that area is nice and smooth. Anywhere that you put tape and anywhere that the paint met the tape, you'll get that hard crusty edge that's just it needs to be sanded off. So I need to seal my inlay and my paint both in. So I'm just using some clear coat, some weather defense to spray on here. That way I don't have to take the chance of rubbing anything like painting a paintbrush on it that might smear it. Now I'm not going to replace that upper knob. I thought it kind of looked out of place, but I am going to put a porcelain knob back onto this little cubby drawer. Now I, I'm going to find center, but it's probably going to be exactly the center where the little knob was that's metal. So I'll have to shift it just a little bit to get it above where I think that metal broke off because I know it's not, it's not gonna screw into metal. what it is about cubbies that I am just attracted to. Let me know down in the comments if you have a, a weird obsession like I do with cubbies. I don't know. Is it because I can display my treasures and my collections in them? I just absolutely love them. So this is a new purchased one, probably like a Hobby Lobby type, so that I want to make look old. So first off, we're going to start taking off the numbers. I love numbers. I don't know why I love numbers. Um, and I was hoping that they weren't glued on, that they were just screwed on. So let's see. Oh, we're good. We're good. I, I was a little nervous like that. Oh, I want to, of course, age the metal. If you're a regular of my channel, you know that that new age galvanized is just crying for some patina. So the first of all, I need to scuff sand metal. Yep, I need to scuff sand metal. If I want to get it painted, I need something for that paint to grab onto. So I actually have some 80 grit sandpaper just running it back and forth in the same direction because I don't want like swirl patterns or anything like that in the metal. And you can tell how it's dulling it right down that it's taking that top coat and making it not shiny. I'll just take a cloth with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water and just clean up that metal. Get that sanding dust taken, taken care of and any residue that's left behind that would prevent my paint from sticking. But then I'm going to flip this over because I remember seeing tags and I have a little bit of a pet peeve, I don't know why, about tags, especially when you're flipping and painting an item. We're going to get those removed. You can see, you can tell that the back got scuffed up. It's an 
unfinished, no top coat kind of paint job. And I know it's the back of the piece and then nobody really kind of sees it, but I'm just going to make sure that I scuff it, just making it look a little bit better than it was. Since I already have this flipped over and I'm going to be painting the piece, I'm going to go ahead and tape off those edges just like I did on the previous little box. Now with painting these the metal galvanized pieces, I'm not just going to paint them. Like it, the patina has a spray, so I need to actually go above and beyond protecting that area, making sure that it's not dripping down. So I put a piece of tape just over that over the cubby spaces, and then I'm folding one up onto the side because the galvanized does not go up there so that it can catch any of the drippage. I'll have to add more tape, but that's enough tape to get it so I can start painting on here. And while the paint is drying, I can add more tape. So now what I'm doing is I'm starting off with Dixie Belle's Patina Paint, but I'm using the Prime Start. I don't always use the Prime Start, but my vision, I do want to see the underline of the red of that rusty color of the Prime Start. Now to apply the, the Prime Start, I am just using a well-loved Dollar Tree stencil brush. You can see it's all flared out and I saved this just for patinas because to me, rust is not a brushed on flat surface. It's a raised, bumpy, and just a little bit of paint on that stencil brush. Just dabbing it on just gives that realistic look. Next coat after the Prime Start is dry is going to be Dixie Belle's Patina paint in the iron color. Same thing, I got a different well-loved stencil brush and I'm going to do the same way of applying it. I'm not worried about the two colors overlapping each other. I like that they don't overlap each other actually and I just apply it the same way. Why my patina paint is still wet, I'm going to start to add my patina spray and I'm going to start off with the green that will make that brownie red rust color. And I want to make sure that I just have it on mist, just a mist. I thought it would be fun just to add a little squirt here and there of the turquoise color. So the blue patina will make that blue turquoisey color. And then about an hour or so later, this is what it looks like. Sometimes it's unpredictable. It all depends on the metal, what color it becomes. But, oh, and then I got a little overexcited because I started to remove the tape and then realized that I needed to seal my patina in. So I'm just going to very gingerly spray, try to aim it, <laughs> my weather defense spray to seal this patina in without getting too much of an overspray. go with my rusty crusty that's going on I kind of want a salvaged barn look so I don't want a lot of paint sticking though I'm going to paint it I'm going to be adding candle wax so this is just a votive I thrifted a whole box I just keep using them up yes you remove the metal pieces and then I just rub it all over so whatever sticks is what sticks what doesn't stick doesn't stick it's all good so yep even inside the cubbies. Did I ever tell you guys that I'm not really, as much as I love cubbies and I'm attracted to buying cubbies, I hate painting the inside of cubbies. I do it. I don't like it, but I do do it. Going for that salvaged barn wood look, I'm going with Red Wagon. Oh, this will be a fun color. I think it'll go well with the rusty crustiness and when the paint hopefully chips off, if that's my plan, when the paint chips off, I think it'll coordinate with the wood color also.
Well, I only applied one coat and it already started doing what it wanted to do. So I'm like, I'm done. I'm not going to apply a second coat. I think it'll be perfect. So first off, I was just taking the scraping tool and I'm like, oh, it's coming right off. But then I realized I'm like, you know what? I think I can just suck it out with the, <laughs> suck it off with the vacuum. Oh, is that not a fun aged barn wood look? Oh, this was so fun. This was so much fun to create. Getting into the cubbies, that was a little bit different. They didn't chip anywhere near like the sides and the outer of it did, but that's okay. So I just scraped off what was going to scrape off, and then I went back in with some sandpaper, paper, some 220 sandpaper in that seam to get it to come off a little bit, little bit more, and then made sure that I sanded so it was nice and smooth with some steel wool. That way when I go to wax it, the waxing will take evenly. If you don't sand everything, your waxing will be darker and lighter in spots. And then I needed to take the air compressor because the cubbies, of course, held all that sanding dust. That just was a little bit awkward to try to get the vacuum into. So we'll just blow it all over the place in the studio. So I'm back at my aging wax. I just love the color of this stuff. Black would have been awesome too, but I didn't want the wood in case the wood like grabbed onto the wax because that's so raw. I didn't want it to turn black. I, the brown would have been perfect. So just wiping it on and then rubbing it all in. The milk, this is still milk paint, so it still needs to be sealed in. If I didn't want it to like darken up the red, I could have put a clear coat on it first, but I wanted it to look like aged barn wood. Yes, I have to do each individual cubby too, though. I just went in and waxed everything in the brown first then went back in and wiped it off and then I did have to use a little bit of clear wax because of course by the time I got nine cubbies done the wax started to dry hello what was I thinking but that's okay the I was able to blend it in with some clear wax but then making sure that I went back in with a tiny little like a tinier paintbrush to make sure that I got the corners cleaned out and that it was waxed in the corners So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? Have I inspired you to look at pre-loved secondhand thrifted items in a new way? It's amazing what a little bit of paint can do to an item and just transform it into something new. So give me a quick comment down below which of the items I made over today were your favorites and if I have inspired you to go out and about or maybe even look at some of the items laying around your own home that you have tucked away that you're just ready to give a little update to. So again, thanks for watching today's video. As always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, you love pre-loved items, you love thrifting, and you like to decorate your home with secondhand finds, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.